G'day folks and welcome to Australian UFO Sightings official podcast. I'm your host Anthony Goodall and you're listening to Encounters Down Under. Here we invite guests on the show to tell us about their encounters with aliens and UFOs, where most of our episodes were streamed live from our Facebook page, which gave listeners the opportunity to ask questions to our guests regarding their encounter. If you have had an encounter and would like to be a guest on the show, please get in touch with us. You can send us a message through our Facebook page, Encounters Down Under, or send us an email at australianufosightings at outlook.com.au. Be sure to join us on Facebook and share with your friends and family to help us grow, and hopefully encourage others to come forward with their encounter. If you're an iTunes listener and a fan of the show, why not give us that five-star rating and review, and you could have your review featured on the podcast. But enough of that, let's get into what you've been waiting for. So kick back, relax with your favourite beverage, and enjoy the show. G'day tomorrow and welcome to the show. Thank you. It's great to have you on. Look, thanks for joining me and getting in contact with me to get on the show. It's um, absolutely wonderful having you on here. Look, you keep me up there um, to tell me about your experiences there. And obviously, like, we want to tell people about these experiences that you've had as well. And you also had a bit of a yep. paranormal experience as well on top of that. So, look, we'll get started with your bit of a UFO experiences there. And I'll let you take the wheel and um, we'll get in touch with your paranormal side as well, which is um, intriguing as well. So, I'll let you go and take the wheel and go for it. All right, no worries. Um, this was roughly about in 2008, 2009. Um, I went out to dinner with um, family to the local Chinese restaurant. Um, my friend dropped me off out the front of my house. This was in Trafalgar, Victoria, which is um, South Gippsland region. Um, and as I stood out the front of my house waving goodbye to the person that dropped me off, um, I looked up and I could see this massive round yellow orangey light and it was not that high up. It was over, definitely over the tree line. Um, and I looked up and it was coming from the Melbourne way and I just watched it. There was no noise and it was just going at a steady um, pace straight along like the back of the highway, which is Prince's Highway um, on two streets off from the highway um yeah and it was unreal so i knew it wasn't normal um there was no sign no sound it was um massive and it was moving so i quickly ran inside and got my daughter and told her to come outside and have a look at it um she came outside took one look at it in the driveway and just yeah it was instantly scared and ran back inside um, I was, I'll admit, I was frightened because I knew it wasn't normal, but um, I just had this compelling feeling just to, I was in awe, couldn't believe what I was watching and I didn't want to take my eyes off it. I kind of wanted to jump in my car and go up to my dad's lookout um, that overlooks the town, um, but I thought, oh, better not in case, you know, <laughs> you know, you can get abducted and stuff. So, <laughs> um yeah, so I didn't, but yeah, and then um, across the road from my house, um, yeah, like the UFO just disappeared, like I couldn't see it, like that um, top of the house roof covered it. Um, and then as it went out of my view, the house next door to me on the corner has a great big electricity power pole and out came this yellow burst of um electricity like a surge burst out the top of the power pole it was like a yellowy white fizzle stuff and it broke up to a whole heap of pieces and just went and just fizzled out to the ground that's incredible so like, um, it couldn't have been like a firework or something maybe or is it like from the actual power lines itself yeah at, at, no not the power line the top of the actual power pole oh the power pole yeah okay yeah. wow yeah out the top of it um but, you know, after, you know, listening to YouTube of other people's UFO stories and stuff, um, you know, they often say, you know, if they're driving and they, you know, they've seen a UFO in the sky, something happens to their car, it either stops or the radio turns off. So I think there's some sort of connection there with like, <clears throat> you know, interfering with our frequencies, our electricity type stuff. Yeah, but, definitely. Yeah, it was, it was amazing. It was like... Yeah, it wasn't normal at all. I'll yeah. never forget it. That's crazy. So how, how long did the whole experience last, do you think, from when you've seen this object? I reckon I was watching it for 
anywhere between 10, 15 minutes. Okay, so that's a decent amount of time. Yep. No and pictures just... or video footage by chance? No, no. But as I was standing out there um, watching it, um, I sort of, like, everything was, like, felt like it was dead silent. Like, there was no dogs barking, like, you know, there was no neighbours that saw it. Like, nobody was, I was just standing there thinking, how is, how am I the only one noticing this? There's no, like, everyone must, all my neighbours must have been inside. And I'm thinking, how is any, no one out in the street, like, having a look at this thing? It was massive. It was bright, no noise, steady pace straight across oh, it was like it was scanning it was looking for something that's what i thought yeah so like did you see like any sort of shape or definition to the actual object itself as well or did it just mostly just the big bright light that was hiding it behind? It, it was it was round it was massive and it was round it was like a big sun but it wasn't the sun yeah so was it actually like um like, how high do you think this thing was from your point of view it, it was pretty low pretty low um I reckon less than 5,000 feet. Okay, that's pretty low then. Yeah, okay. So it looked probably yep. the same height as what a lot of aircraft would probably be flying at. I roughly. reckon it was low. Yep. Yep, definitely. So um, in regards to that, so um, like with the light shining from it, was it actually like lighting up the area around it or was it just more just its own glow, confined glow? It was, it was more like, yeah, I couldn't see like, you know, that there was a projection of light coming out from underneath it or anything. It was just glowing it was just round and it was just bright mainly yellow but a bit of like um a tint maybe a tinge of orange in it um yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. it wasn't like lighting up any of the rooftops or anything like that or tree lines or anything like that nothing like that no no yeah that's interesting because i've heard stories they were like you know they sort of give off their own light whereas like very different to ours whereas it's like a direct light in a sense even if it's like a, a, a beam of light or a spread beam of light or something like this still lights up the area around it to a certain yep. degree whereas these objects seem to be really confined in their own light and they're not really spreading that light if that makes sense you know it's not it doesn't light up surrounding areas which is strange in its own way yeah um i don't know but i sort of got the feeling that it was it was going slow but at a steady constant pace but I got the feeling that it was like out the back because like we're in the country. So I, like my my roads here, then I've got another, another two roads in the highway and then over the over the highway is just all like, you know, bush and just farmers, cow land and stuff like that. So, but even though that there was no projection of light coming out from the bottom of it, shining on, some, on an object, you know, um, I still got the feeling that it was looking for something. Yeah, okay. So with the speed, regards to that, um, was that like about the same speed as what a light plane would be doing or is it a lot slower? Oh, way slower. Yep, way... so it's sort of hovering. So if it was a plane, it would have been stolen and fallen to the ground or... Yep, it possibly. was, yeah, it was, it was quite very slow. Yep. I mean, I can do it with, I can't say, you know, or even guess how, what speed it was going, but I can do it with, the way that I saw it, like by making the noise, it sounds weird, yeah. but it like up, up to like, you know, like this. And then it's like no noise, but it was like, this is the speed it was doing. This is going to be so weird. <laughs> yeah. You know, sort yeah, of okay. like that, that sort of speed. Yeah. It's, it's weird, <laughs> but it was massive. Yeah. That's strange. Massive. That's the big thing. Like you mentioned too, like no one else could see this thing. Like especially next to a highway, like you think cars would be pulling over everywhere. Um, I don't yeah. know if you've seen the videos on Facebook there where over in America people were freaking out seeing a orange light in yeah. the sky in the distance there. They're all parking up on the highways and they're freaking out and it's just the, the Goodyear blimp. So yeah, yeah, this thing here is, what, do you think maybe it could be in the size of a blimp? I don't know how big a blimp is really. Oh, they're pretty massive. I've seen one there as a kid um, on the Gold Coast when I was growing up. They had the Goodyear blimp come out. And we freaked out too. Like we were thinking, oh, it's a UFO because it looks absolutely out of place. Yeah. In the way it just hovers there. Um, so yeah. they're, they're a good size to them. So, um, the, yeah, the fact that like no one was pulling up and freaking out over this thing makes you wonder well, like, I, why couldn't they see it? From the house that I was living at at the time, I can't actually see the highway two streets away. So I don't know if anyone pulled up on the highway 
and um, stopped and watched it. I don't know. But I looked like down, I've got a mass, like where I live, it was a massive long road, um, houses on both sides, and there was no one out there at all. No one. It's strange because even that, uh, in that sort of sense too, like I've, I've spoken to other people in the past there where they sort of live in their like own dimension, which is a possible explanation. And for some people or whatever the reason being, they get brought into this dimension as well, which excludes you from the outside sources. But you can yeah. sort of see this object itself in your own sort of dimensional environment, if that makes sense. But the fact that you mm. could also bring, uh, was it your daughter you said? To come in yeah. and have a look? Yeah. yeah. Um, did anyone else come out and see this at all? Or was it just you and your no. daughter? Yep. Yep, okay. So, uh, yeah. Um, was there anyone else at home at the time, though? Or was it just... No, it was just me and my daughter. Like I just separated from her father. Okay. Um, three years before that, so it was just yeah, me and her at home. Yep. Okay. That, that sort of puts a bit of a thing to it too, where um, people sort of feel that seeing these things is also a bit of an emotional sort of connection. Like um, it brings that emo emotional frequency on top of this thing, where given the I don't know the the spectrum that you're in, I suppose when you're going through all these emotional changes like you know like people will say like uh during a uh, family loss or they're going through like as you mentioned yeah. then you just like you split with a partner you know yeah. you your emotional vibrations are changing and you're changing the spectrum of what you're seeing in reality and whether that's a thing or not i don't know but people say, uh, sort of claim this is a possibility and yeah. that could be a reason why you saw this thing that was there hovering around but other people weren't because you were in that sort of zone if that makes makes sense i don't know um i just think that you know most of me neighbors i mean it was 9 30 at night roughly um you know most of me neighbors must have been inside you know yeah um no one was because i was already getting out of a car and i looked up and i could see this yellow light thinking it's it's too late for the sun to be out next thing you know it's coming closer towards um yeah and it's just massive massive and it was moving and dead silent not even a rumble couldn't even feel like a frequency inside you know how people can go oh you sort of feel it sort of rumble or whatever yeah but yeah, nothing dead silent and yep. moving so you weren't even getting like a sort of like a a, a a feeling of attachment to this thing at all nothing like in that sort of sense oh i was i was stunned i was amazed i couldn't believe like i couldn't believe how lucky i was to have seen it um, I knew it wasn't normal. It was no normal aircraft. It wasn't the sun. It wasn't me imagining it. Like, it, it just was what it was. Yeah. So, I, yeah. I, I guess it was probably a bit too early for social media to really be going off its chops around that time. Like, you know, we were sort of getting the grasp of social media back then. Uh, but well, nothing on the news or radio or anything like that? And that. I tried to do research. I even look on YouTube, typing in, you know, um, different types of ufos witnessed and seen in australia or victoria and a couple i've seen in different countries were like the the big round yellow one but nothing like it's all filmed up high in the sky nothing like my view that i had so but i was listening to one of your podcasts the other day and there was a a young woman on there and she said she lived um um in new south wales i think somewhere out in the middle of nowhere um and she her and her boyfriend her partner were in bed and they had a little boy and they lived in a one bedroom um house i think you were talking about and, rachel yeah and she said um that the light was shown um was shining inside her in her bedroom or whatever and her boyfriend got up and had a look and it just took off um that's because she said that was like yellow and i think a yellowy orange yep so I don't know if it's, you know, the same type of craft that we saw. I don't know. Yeah. So this is like, is this the first experience you've had with regards to a possible UFO in that nature? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, my mum, like, she died when I was 16 of a massive heart attack. Um, but growing up as a kid, I, like, she was a little bit spiritual. Like, she wasn't closed-minded. She believed that you know, um, in ghosts and stuff like that. Um, wasn't really talked about a lot, but she was sort of, she wasn't ever closed minded about it. So I sort of grew up being a little bit like that too. Um, 
you know, open to the idea, you know, that just because you can't see something doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Yeah. Um, so I've always grown up a little bit spiritual and open-minded. Um, but, yeah, when I saw this UFO, I thought that just sealed the deal for me and I'm like, I knew it was true. <laughs> I knew it was true. It's always so, a great feeling, isn't it, when it's like something that you've been longing for and believing for so long. Like, you're like you weren't against the whole thing, but just something that like gives you that extra proof and evidence to say, like, yeah, we are actually real. We're, we exist. And that's the best, yep. that's like the best feeling ever, isn't it? It's just like that big satisfaction going, wow, okay, yep, my mind is blown. It is yep. incredible. It, it, I, I, honest to God, it was real and it wasn't normal. <laughs> yeah, and you, you're buzzing for a few days, aren't you? It's just absolutely, yeah. like, it's just, ah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was amazed. I couldn't believe, I still look back and I've like got goosebumps on my arms just thinking about it, thinking I wish I could see it again. But yeah, I'm still scared though, you know. Yeah, yeah. I understand that completely. <clears throat> it's um, it's an incredible fear, feeling, like, and especially like, the best part of this whole thing is like I talk to a lot of people there. You get a lot of people who are a bit like skeptical. I don't like the word skeptical, but you know, it's the term that they want to use. Um, yeah. The people have like sort of they believe, but they don't believe at the same time because they want the bigger evidence and stuff like. That. It's like when you get someone to like a, an absolute undeniable skeptic, like where they think nothing else exists except for what we see in our everyday lives. And yet they go and see something that defies all their known logic. And they're like, okay, these things are real. Yeah. Um, What has been happening my whole entire life? You know, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's a total eye opener for them. And that's what I love about this whole thing. Like they get just, they get proven wrong. And I love that. Um, I've noticed it happens a lot with um, men and with seeing ghosts often like, <clears throat> the wives are a little bit more open and, you know, they might have a ghost in their house or something like that. <clears throat> and the and the husband or whatever partner will be like, oh, no, you know, sort of dismiss it. And then, you know, the guy will see it and he'll be like, oh, my God, I can't believe that I thought this was not possible. Yeah. It's, it's something along the um, lines of my research too is uh... – even like other researchers themselves, like they'll say, like women are a lot more open to what would be the unnatural to us, I suppose, like you know the unknown. So when it comes to paranormal, even UFOs or sort of stuff like that, um, they seem to see things a lot more than what men would do. Or I don't know, it's something within that spectrum of the female's mind or something, like, or with their eye or whatever. Um, they just seem to be a lot more open to it, which is a strange coincidence, in the same way. I think, yeah. It could have something to do with, you know, women being mothers and, you know, they sort of naturally do have a sixth scent type thing going on maybe. Yeah, mother's intuition sort of type thing. Yeah, a little bit more. I mean, this is no no um, insult to men, but women are very like they can be doing something else and then they're this and multitasking and um they're just very aware and in tune, I think. Yeah. And especially, especially like when they, you know, become a mum. Yeah, it's right. Like there's definitely the thing there between us. Like this, yeah, like you're saying, there's nothing to sort of differentiate. Derif- <laughs> I can't even say the word now. <laughs> differentiate yeah. uh, from men and women. Like, but there, there are certain abilities that men and women do have, and like that's that's nature. You can't change that. But yeah. um, like, like I was saying, like this is something I've just sort of been sort of getting into a little bit myself now, which I've just um, sort of recently learned about, is something that's called tetrachromacy, where it's not um, not all women have this ability, but it's, it's prone to be in women only, whereas men, if they were sort of have this sort of ability, they're actually colorblind. So there's something that's going on through their, I don't know if it's a gene thing or if it's like it's something that's a, a mutation okay. in our own bodies or something like that, but yeah. Women have this thing called tetrachromacy where they are able to see more colors or more vibrant colors, which they can see better in the in that sort of spectrum of visual visualization. Oh, so, okay. So that's where it also comes into play. There, where we're saying like you know, women have the more ability to be open minded into the, seeing different things more commonly than what men would do. So, yeah. whether tetrachromacy is part of that factor i don't know it's just something of those things i'm sort of trying to work out myself now to try and link why women are more prone to seeing more of that spectrum of the unnatural or That's if you want to call it natural because it is natural 
That's interesting. I might look into that. I've never heard of that before. Yeah, no, I've only just got recently put onto me um, from someone who emailed me through because I was always asking the question, like, why can people see things but yet others can't? And as I was mentioning before, like, whether it be a dimensional thing there where people get drawn into that dimension and by accident or by force, I don't know. It's, that's another question. Or are people just able to see something there because of their extra abilities in their eyes or their mind, you know, where they're more open to or more prone to be seeing these things. So it's, yeah, it leaves yeah. a lot of questions. I think um, also if you have, like some people tend to just look down and they're so consumed with the modern world or whatever, you know what I mean? Like just um, they don't go sit outside like me at night time and go and have a cup of tea and just look up. And I'm not, I'm not, you know, disappointed. I did it last night. I did it the night before. I'm not disappointed that if I don't see anything, which I didn't the last two nights. But, um, yeah, I think if you've got a bit of a, I don't know, maybe some people are born with it, some aren't, a bit of um, higher consciousness maybe, yeah. um, a little bit more aware of your surroundings, not just looking in your phone, you know, constantly and, you know, I think if you if you just, you don't, yeah, just, if you open yourself up just a little bit and just be open to, oh, you know, these things you know, can happen. Um, but yeah, since I seen that um, yellow UFO, um, I've I just had this knack now of just I could be anywhere, like camping or out in the backyard, and I just I look up and it's right. I can see something that's not normal in the sky. So even a couple of my friends have gone, "Wow, you've got this weird thing going on. How you can just out out the corner of your eye, you can pick something up that's." moving type thing yeah i don't know yeah look Weird. people have claimed too like you know after they've had their initial experience there that it's sort of broadened their spectrum of the mind basically or open their consciousness their vibration or whatever it is to open their eye up or third eye if you want to call it that you know where they are yeah. able to start seeing things a bit more commonly or they might have the chance to see something of that nature yeah so it, it also leads to questions there the too yeah and i know i know some people that do believe in ufos and aliens and stuff like that um but they haven't seen them um and they're like oh you're so lucky Tam. like you saw like two you know well at least two i know that it was definitely two i've probably seen a couple more that just sort of you know didn't you know go yeah. i don't know you sort of forget like if it's not something that's outstanding like the two that i saw you sort of tend to feel yeah, you sort of like start palming off a little bit, going, "Well, it's not like that amazingly unusual, but it's like something that you just like, eh, possibly something." But yeah, yeah, and if you're not sure, but I think these two encounters that I saw really stood out were abnormal, so that's why I've always remembered them. Yeah. So, so you want to tell I us about just... the second one of your when you seen? Yeah, um, the second one was I moved um, to my new house where I'm currently at. Um, I think it was about. 2018 2019 um it was definitely before covid hit <clears throat> um i was out of my um back decking and yeah just sitting sitting out on my chair under there and looked up and i've got this great big glass window that i can just see through um as soon as i come out my back door and it was towards melbourne and i looked up and there was this red light um and it was flashing on and off. It was doing weird manoeuvres like it was um, zigzagging and then it'd stop. But it wasn't just little zigzags. Like they were like, they were big and just crazy. Weird, just weird speeds. Um, and I ran inside and got my daughter out of bed and I said, Talisha, come and have a look at this. This, like, this is like not normal. Um, she come out and had a look and, yeah, she freaked out again. She's like, oh, God, yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, ran back to bed. And I just couldn't take my eyes off it and stood there watching it. Um, and then it stopped zigzagging and moving and darting around um, and it just stood still for, you know, I don't know. I think I was watching this thing for at least 30 minutes. Um, and then eventually just stopped and just stayed still. And then its lights just slowly, slowly, slowly went less red until it just totally faded out. Yeah, okay. So it might have been just in a straight line heading off out to the horizon maybe. 
Yeah, maybe. I don't know. It looked like it just stood still, like it was not moving. Like after watching it for ages, just zigzagging everywhere. It was just, yeah. I mean, like planes and helicopters don't go. Yeah. <laughs> like, I was going to say a drone. Like, the question I was going to ask, like, could it have been possibly a drone? But then you mentioned about 30 minutes of um, time frame watching this thing. And yep. the best you're going to get out of a drone is about 15, 20 minutes, especially around is that it? time. Like, yeah, around about 2018. That's when drones started really sort of coming out a bit more then. But yeah, um, yeah they were lucky to do full 15, 20 minutes at best around that yeah. time. Um, but yeah. even then, you would still have um, navigation lights, depending on the type of drones. Like, you'll see a bit of green lights. But if this thing was purely red, then uh, it sort of rules out drones in, in entirely anyway, with just regards to how long you were actually watching this for. Yeah, um, it did occur to me, like, that's why it caught me eye, the light, and then I watched it and I thought, mm, that doesn't look normal. Um, but it did cross my mind that it could have been a drone. But it, after watching it, and I just thought, no, nah, I, don't, I don't reckon even a drone could do that. The You'd be surprised what maneuvers drones can pull. They're, um, they're quite incredible. Uh, a lot speed. of people sort of, they don't, they don't um, give credit what drones can actually do with um set up right yeah. you know they, they can do some incredible maneuvers speeds are quite decent you know like um i think people need to stop thinking that drones aren't a possibility with the maneuvers that they can do it's just more the yeah. time frame or how long you can watch them for it, that's where the limit's going to come with especially like um uh, drones yeah. that are into to the public availability um like i said like they now they can sort of set, spend about probably about half an hour up in the air at a time depending on what they're okay. doing. Like, if they're, like, manoeuvring around, like, rapidly, like, they're going to drain the battery in no time. But if yeah. they're just, like, hovering or just slightly manoeuvring around, they're going to have a lot more playtime in the air. Um, yeah, but in, I... a, in a sense, like you were saying, like, they're manoeuvring around, doing crazy manoeuvres and stuff like Like, best you have a drone to do at that time, there was, like, probably about 10 minutes, 15 minutes at the best. With yeah. crazy manoeuvring. The speeds were phenomenal. Um, I don't know nothing about drones at all. Nothing. Yeah, so with the maneuvers, like, were they, like, sort of, like, instant to, like, to one spot there? Like, like you just follow, like, the line to, like, just, like, like from one point here and then just bang oh, to another point? Or is it just sort of, like, a big, like, fast? Um, It was doing just all types. It was, like, it was, you know, stationary, completely still. Then it started doing a whole heap of these weird maneuvers and it was just zigzag and it was, like, up, cross, down, like, just, but not, not just little zigzags like it they were big and then it'd stop and then come back around and zigzag again and then completely stop for you know a couple of couple of seconds or minutes or whatever and i don't know it was just weird yeah it sounds weird and I'm, yeah. I'm trying to get like a bit of like a bit of a critical analysis across i'm not trying to like give any discredit i'm just trying to give them an idea like any possibilities is trying to rule out and by yeah. sounds like i i like i was saying like you can rule a drone out you can rule a plane out because planes can't do that helicopters won't even attempt to do anything like that. Uh, I knew it wasn't any normal aircraft. But when I first saw it, I thought, oh, maybe it could have been a drone. But after watching it for like half an hour, I thought, no, nah, I don't reckon. I just <laughs> knew itself, like the speeds and the, the zipping and the zagging and just going that fast doing the zigzags and then just to completely just stop like that is just unreal. Yeah. Oh, look, I, I'm, another thing, like, you think it'd be on social media somewhere, someone would record this. Like, yeah. Yep. It, it seems strange. Yeah. And I did, um, after that, I did find on Facebook, um, I think it's a Melbourne um, Paranormal Uf, UFO um, Facebook group, and I searched on there and I, um, yeah, put my story on there and that, but, yeah, it didn't. No responses to it, unfortunately. No. Nah. Yeah, it's strange. It's annoying, like, because like, you want people to be able to, like, see the same thing that you've seen to, like, sort of help verify what it could have been and then yeah. just, like, sort of, like, give more credibility to your story, you know? And that's the sad part. And this is where it comes down to, like, are people seeing these things or not? Or is it just this special amount of people that can see these? They they could be. They could be seeing the same things, but obviously there's that many of them going on, you know? People can't sort of, you know are in different areas and it's hard to sort of match it up to like it takes time um some people don't even want to talk about it yeah people people think that they're nuts um 
I'm personally, I'm not afraid. Like I don't care what people think. I know, I know the three extraordinary things I've been blessed to see. So I don't care if people don't believe because it was, they're true. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, that's the thing. I mean, like, as long as you believe it yourself and like, you know, you, you, you know, these things are real. You're not hallucinating this, seeing things like there's like, obviously no, like no drugs involved, no alcohol involved. Like there's the things you don't have to be on that sort of, um, substances to see these things. People are yeah. of the right mind, you know, they're of a sound mind and just randomly yeah. seeing these things. So that's the biggest reality of this thing. Not everyone's on drugs. No one's crazy, you know, just reality. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, but I do think that the whole area of it is getting better. Like people are sort of waking up a little bit more. They're looking up. They're, they're talking more open to other people about it now. I do think it's getting a lot better. So that that's a positive for me. I, I like seeing people discuss it and be open-minded or people that haven't seen um, paranormal things but are still open to it, you know. Um, I love it. I love sharing it. I love listening to people's stories, you know. Yeah, that red one stood out as a UFO to me, but I I don't I definitely don't know whether it could have been a drone, but it didn't look like it to me. It looked pretty like something from not this world. Yeah, well, and even I, at this point, it's still a UFO because it's still unidentified. Um, yeah. But whether or not you want to claim it as a alien craft, that's another thing. Like that's puts it on a totally different I, spectrum. I'd I'd be more sure about that yellow one that I saw. I I reckon. One thousand percent, that thing was. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's the main thing. It's out in my mind. It's just unbelievable. I wish, I wish everyone could have seen it. <laughs> it's frustrating, so, isn't it? Yeah, I wish I could know more about it. I wish I could meet someone or talk to someone that may have seen that the same one at the same time, or maybe one that looks the same at a different time in a different state area. You know. But yeah, I try and do as much research as I can. Not yeah. only about the one that I've seen, but I like listening to other people's stories. I love watching the f videos of them on YouTube and stuff. I don't know. I've just got a real thirst for that kind of knowledge. Even though I don't, I don't claim to know more than anybody else. I'm just fascinated by it because I do. I'm fascinated by it because I do think it's real. It does happen. Yeah. So. Absolutely. Look, look, there's no wrong, nothing wrong with trying to question what it is and trying to figure out what the the answers are for. Because even though, yeah. like, even the best person in the world who researches this every day, um, they might claim to know what they are, but honestly, I don't think they know at all. Because no one knows. We don't have the clear answer. We don't have that definitive little alien yeah. or whatever spaceship landing on our front doorsteps. They're going, "Hello, we are here. We are to exist." Because we don't have any evidence of that. There's nothing there. That can be called or nearly claimed as like you no know, CGI or fake or anything like that. We'd have nothing there that gives us that clear evidence that we want. So well, not we're all that normal, here. Not not that normal regular people like you and I around the planet don't know, but maybe, you know, there was a you know, maybe um the Roswell incident, you know, and there was aliens found and maybe that was taken to area 51 we we will never know yeah. but it's a possibility that's it that's it right true. oh absolutely look there's so many different questions there like so many different um scenarios that could possibly be true and like you're saying like we might never ever know and never even find out but until we actually get them physically landing on our front doorsteps there and waving to us going g'day then yeah, yeah. we won't ever really know because they're massive cover-ups yeah, it's always going to be up for debate. Yeah. Well, we don't know. Yeah. And that's the frustrating part too. Like when you look into this whole genre of UFOs or even the paranormal thing, because like, there's no evidence to back it up, that's where we start looking at like crazy people because like we're making stuff up or, you know, people yeah. might be trying to get attention out of it, you know, for whatever reasons. Um, If they're trying to monetize out of it even. Uh, it's one of those things like, you know, it, it's entertaining to say the least. But for the ones who are hardcore and like the people experiences there who have ge had genuine experiences, I feel for them, like including myself, I've had my own experiences. And I you feel have. it's frustrating. Yes, I have. Um, I feel it's very frustrating because we've had nothing there to give credibility to our experiences there to really prove that, like, you know, these things are real. We're not talking bullshit. We're not talking crap. 
we're not crazy, like yeah. I'm saying, you know, we're not on drugs or alcohol for that, whatever reasons. You know, we are literally seeing these things in their worldwide, and that's the frustrating part because we want people to understand where everyone's coming from when we say, like, hey, look, we've seen something that's strange and crazy. Um, yeah. It's against our laws of nature as we know it, but the existence is there, but we can't prove it. Yeah. But the thing is, too, that's when you just let it go and go, well, I'm not going to be able to prove it to everybody in the world, but I know that I saw it. So, you know, just try and be be at peace with that, perhaps. Yeah. That's one of the other things I, I do. Sorry, go ahead. I under, Yeah, I understand, like, it is frustrating because I, I want to, you know, I want evidence. I Like, I want to. I want to know what that thing is that of that I saw that yellow thing, you know. But you know, probably never will, and that's okay. I just think that yeah, we're lucky if we do experience like things that aren't normal. Yeah, that's why I like, enjoy doing this podcast, you know, because I love getting people in here talking about this, and like it's it, this is what helps give credibility to the experiences there because people are yep. seeing these same things or similar things of that nature, and yep. you know having multiple people seeing the same or well, similar things, you know, that's going to give more credibility to the whole topic itself. And that's where yeah. I love it. Like, because that's where our evidence is in doing this sort of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good thing what you're doing. So thank you. No, no, I appreciate it. No, look, it's all thanks to you, you and others coming out speaking about it. Cause obviously you're like you're saying before, you know, there's still a stigma attached to it. There's a bit of fear, a bit of criticism behind it and people are still hiding in that. And so I think it's a lot more brave for you people to come on and yeah. talk about it yeah well i've got nothing to hide so and i honestly believe that it, what i saw was real um and i don't care what people think you know if you want to call me crazy whatever i don't care you're gonna have to do that with millions of other people around the world too then <laughs> that's so, right i'm just i'm you know i i think that i'm pretty brave you know what i mean pretty gutsy like yeah i don't i don't let things stop me i don't care what people think so i know what i saw so, um, yeah, it sounds narrow-minded and selfish, but, you know, I'm not going to let anyone sort of, like that, the, the ghost that I saw, you know, I told my ex that and I said, and he just stayed quiet and I said, oh, you don't believe me, do you? And he goes, um, I believe that you believe it. And, <laughs> and I thought, well, you know, that's okay, fair enough, that's what you think or whatever. Um yeah, what can you do about it? You know, like you can't you can't expect everyone to be- believe me or type thing. Um, just before yeah, we do just... get to your paranormal side, there, I just got a couple of questions there in regards to your first experience. Like, um, so like obviously we're not, you don't really underst- like understand or know what the uh, the yellow object could have been, but do you have like a sort of well, over the time you've thought about this, do you like do you think what it could have been controlled by alien entities of that nature? Or yeah, yeah. I don't think it was, it was no normal aircraft. Um, it, it felt like it wasn't from this world, like made in this world or f- originally from this world. Could just feel it. It wasn't normal. It was, it was too big. It was bright. It was abnormal. No sound. The surge that it had, it interfered with electricity, the power pole. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, a strange part too, isn't it? When it came out of the, po- the power pole itself, not the actual power lines, which is very strange. Yep, at the top of the power pole. Yep, all this yellow. I think it started out as um, like just like a yellow, like so- small star type thing just come bursting out of the top of it and then it just shattered into like a hundred pieces and all broke off all these little individual like um similar like a firework yeah. basically. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. what I sort of referred to like possibly like a firework could have gone off at the right time maybe, but if you're saying that it came out from the top of the power pole, then it's like you can't Yeah you, it did. Yeah, so that's 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 a strange part. I've never really heard of that. Like I've had heard of like these crafts sort of interfering with power and all that sort of stuff but not to the extent of like something bursting out of the top of a power line where it no, doesn't I even haven't... conduct the electricity from the top of a power line because it wouldn't so yeah it was weird it was so weird and i've never come across anyone saying the same thing ever either like yeah. it was weird like i'm standing probably 
oh, 50 meters from the pole. Yep. And I, because as soon as the UFO passed over, like went past, but um, the house on the corner, its roof covered it. And I'm like, damn it, I can't see it anymore. Soon as I couldn't see it, that's when the big surge come out of the um, power pole. Yeah. So I'm um, sorry, I was just making an assumption there with the power pole. Is it a wooden power pole or is it a metal or yeah. concrete? No, wooden. wooden. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Right. I can even, um, when I'm, because that's in Trafalgar, I'm in Maui now, yep. but um, my family still lives in Trafalgar and my sister lives down um, a road near it. Um, I, I look at that power pole every time I turn that corner to go up to my sister's house. So I can even take an actual photo of the power pole and send it to you if you want. Yeah, or even if you want to do that, yeah. And like, there was no damage to the power yeah, pole but, or anything like Hey? No damage to the power pole or anything like No, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. Yeah, okay. Uh, so uh, go on, referring back to the, sorry. I don't remember if I went out the next day and looked at it to see if it was burnt or anything. I can't. I probably should have. I mean, I may have, but it's not something that I remember looking for. I don't know why that's pretty silly because that'd be the first thing you do is like, you know, go out and have a look the next morning or whatever and see if it's burnt or the grass is burnt or anything. Yeah, but yeah I don't still a bit spooked. <laughs> Yeah, it was unreal. It was sort of like, yeah, as it passed, it was interfering with our electricity or something. Yeah. It was sucking, it was too, that, that thing held too much energy, which interfered with our electricity. I don't know. It definitely had something to do with it, though. Yeah. So no, it, the houses around didn't like lose any power in it or nothing like sort of surge or not that I, Not that I know of. And when I couldn't see it and I seen the, that come out of the power pole I obviously you know stood out there for a bit longer or whatever and then went back inside but i can't i can't remember if the power went off or anything so i mean i think i would remember if it did yeah so no, that's um, fair enough. yeah it's just unreal it's just weird yeah it's oh weird. it's amazing yeah it's pretty cool pretty <laughs> cool absolutely so obviously like given like you know had a little time to sort of think this is over like, what are your thoughts when you come to think of, like, the actual ET and controlling these things? Like, what's your immediate thoughts of what they look like in that nature? What's your thoughts? Um, well, it's hard to say, really, because, you know, the more research you do, um, the more you can get a little bit brainwashing to, they, they're three foot, they're, you know, big eyes, big head, short um spindly limbs you know it's hard to sort of until you've seen one but i do in, within myself i do believe that there are probably thousands and thousands of different kinds obviously from um the kids at the primary school in africa back in the 60s that saw the ufo um, apparently they were black and hairy or something i think um I vaguely remember that one. i know the one that's story you're talking about but i can't quite remember what the whole entire story but yes um you know to the other side of the world you know where they look reptilian um you know I, I do believe like you know we're only like a speck in this whole thing so i do think that there are a lot of different types i think they've got a lot of different agendas um i do believe that there are tall blonde beautiful nordic types i do I do believe that probably there are reptilian ones. I do believe that there probably are the little grey children looking ones. You know, anything is possible. Yeah. But I tell you, I tell you one story is the um, Travis Walton one. Oh, when yeah. I heard that, I just thought this man is not lying at all. He's still traumatized by it. He's the, he's just no doubt in my mind that he's telling the truth. Yeah, I was I had someone on the podcast there who actually met and got with um met up with him and all sorts of stuff and talked to him and that and really? said he's genuine. That's cool. So yeah. yeah, um, I can't remember who I was speaking to with that one now, but yeah, um, I'm trying to think now. <laughs> Brain's gone dead. But yeah, yeah like she, uh, I mean, even she was saying like you know like he's genuine, like there's no bullshit behind his story at all. Yeah, you can see it. You can see that he's telling the truth, absolutely. And um, you just think, oh, you poor man. Like, no, I don't, you know, like, no one's going to come out and say stuff like that so they can be ridiculed and put under tests and scrutiny and 
have cops lying about them and you know what I mean they're not going to normal people aren't going to do put themselves in that position in for the rest of their life to be laughed at and scrutinized it just doesn't make sense and you can see it's written all over his face he's not lying yeah at all i think it's just recently too like his um the, the guys that was with him at the time they, they've come out now too trying to say it was all bullshit really like, yeah I, I don't quote me on i'm pretty sure that's what happened but yeah like even then like it's like pretty late on coming out saying it's bullshit now like why after all these years say it's bullshit instead of saying like what's happened between that there like either he's got sick of the whole story and the the attention that's come with it or of course he's not getting enough attention on it maybe i don't know yeah who knows i know i think i don't know but i think one of them did die didn't they did he oh that? i'm not sure i haven't really kept too much up with it oh i just remember here is uh seeing a thread about one of the guys there coming out saying it was all fake or something Ooh. like that. So whether that's true or not, I don't know. It's just, um, you know, everything's all rumours these days. Well, that's a bit sad. Yeah, I think it's true. And I really do think that they really um, got frightened out of their wits and took, thought he was dead and did take off. I mean, I think any normal people do that. I yeah. mean, in a, you know, um, I mean, unless it was like, yeah, kids or something or a family member then maybe people wouldn't take off but i don't know yeah, yeah. i haven't seen I, the movie for it yet either but apparently hollywood really ruined the whole story like they made it worse than what it sounded um which one are you talking about uh, are you talking pretty sure it's called fire in the sky oh yeah that's the original one um that was made a long time ago yeah that was um, that was too embellished yeah. um even i was said that um but I did hear that he's making one himself and it's a true, his version of it. But I haven't come across it or anything yet. Yeah, okay. I'll have to try and keep an eye out for it and if it comes up, that, I'll that share was, it out. Yeah, I reckon that was quite a few years ago he said that. So I don't know. I don't know what happened to it, but I'd be interested to watch it. But I've watched him talk a lot at um, conferences and stuff like that too. Yeah, I think it's, I think that one's a very um, fascinating case. Yeah, definitely. No, look, there's a lot of, Cases out there where things have happened to people there and they're not taken seriously or, you know, yeah. obviously because, yeah, back in those days there, the stigma still attached to the crazy persons, you know, can't believe them because they're, for well, yeah. whatever reasons, you know. But it's, it's sort of weird, like, back in those days where it was really concentrated on, like, where people were having these sort of experiences there. And now, coming these days, we're not really seem to be seeing a lot of these sort of cases, if that makes sense. We're not seeing, like, you know, abduction people like, you know, media-wise attention of abductions. Like, what's happened between the 80s and the 90s where the highlights were a lot of people getting abducted, you yeah. know, their stories were getting taken by media. Yeah. But yet now, these days, we're not really getting much of that at all. It's because they're shunned upon. <laughs> well, yeah. Or is this the media's just got no interest in it anymore? Because, like, you know, I know there was a bit of a laughing stock maybe back in those days there, but there was, seemed to be a lot of more... I don't know media coverage with it because, like, you had the um, they, the I've noticed case. They, they do, they do laugh a lot. I've seen like a couple of snippets of on you know, um, even on some of the Australian um morning shows and that. And they sort of, oh, yeah, we've got some footage of a UFO apparently spotted in Queensland, Australia, and, <laughs> and you know, I have a bit of a laugh about it, but it's not yeah. only Australia, no, that's it's, right, um, yeah. I don't think they should be laughing at it. It's like they're, they're, they're told to laugh at it and, you know, treat it as a joke. And it's not a joke. No, they're that's real. Right. That's right. And that's the biggest thing that we need to try and get across to the media, even to the public, though, who are so sceptical in this whole thing, that these things are real and exist. Stop taking the piss out of everything. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you know, not every single thing that everyone says is the truth. You know, there are a lot of cases out there and people say, oh, yeah, they'll taken up in the UFO and whatever you know some of them probably true there's probably some that aren't as well that's right so um you can't believe everything you see and you read but there is something to it i don't think somebody just imagined these creatures up in these aircrafts a long time ago like it's all over caves it's all over like all different um nationalities all over the world like they're ancient yeah aliens are and for a long time they probably even created this planet who'd know 
Yeah, well, that's one of the things. I, that's one of my theories for, like, you know, we're a bit of an alien ant farm where they've sort of planted the seed for humans to grow and we they're could, just sitting back and observing. We could even, that might be why they're abducting people or have, because they're trying to do hybridization. Who knows? Or maybe we're half, half them as well. Who knows? Maybe they created us. We don't know. That's it. So yeah, it's. <laughs> It's fascinating, like um the lady Linda Moulton Hare, like she's she's clever. Like, yeah. I like her. I don't often get to, but um, you know, she said there's some stuff linking to um oh, Antarctica, you know, yeah. coming out of the water and the ice in Antarctica and yeah, I don't know. It's fascinating. Yeah, no, there's a lot of stuff that seems to be happening down that way. Like there's a lot of attention and especially in the UFO community where you know the highlight seems to be Antarctica is the place to be at the moment in regards to UFOs and that, because yeah. we're, we're a better place to really sort of go and sort of work on UFOs or hide UFOs or even again, yeah. like down deep in the ocean. Cause like there's plenty of ocean down there to go and hide down to. Yeah. Very so, deep. And populated. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, who knows? It makes you wonder. It's fascinating. It's all fascinating. I love learning and listening and yeah. It is. So look, tell us about this paranormal thing that you had, this experience you had. I'm sure people are itching to hear what this experience of yours was. Yeah, I wasn't sure whether, you know, that would be going against the rules. Like, that's why I asked you, you know, I've got a, I've seen a ghost thing. Um, Yeah, and you said it was okay to tell the story. Yeah, no, we get, a, we get the odd few here that come in through on the podcast that have a bit of paranormal experience as well. Yeah. It's like, ah, look, you know what? We all, this is all the unknown sort of stuff, you know. It's got something that's sort of interesting and goes against the normal you know modern day so why not bring it in yeah yeah okay well um i think it was 2010 or 11 um it was about a year or two before i nearly died and got bowel surgery um i was, my daughter was about seven or eight at the time um this was in the same house where i saw that yellow ufo light it was in traff um and it was about 11.30 at night. I'm laying in bed. My bed head is facing south. My bedroom door is to the um, east. And my daughter, about seven or eight at the time, is laying beside me in my bed. Um, went to sleep about 9.30. I woke up at 11.30 and sat up because the room, the temperature in the room just dropped dramatically. It was freezing cold and it woke me up out of a deep sleep. Um, and then I f flipped me um, old silver LG flip-flop phone open, flip the screen open. And then as I'm looking at the time, it was like 11.25 or something like that. And you could see all this, you know, like condensation steam coming out of my mouth. It was that cold in my room. And I look over and this thing flew in from the door I had um a chest of drawers on an angle in the corner in my bedroom um and I watched this thing come in and it just went whoosh straight past me to the corner of my bedroom um it stood there for a minute well it came in and it was probably about a meter off the floor and I could see I don't know how I saw it but it had all these um like v slits underneath its cape you know like a witch's cape um you know how you know you can cut you can cut the the bottom of the material like that that's what it had all around it and it was about a meter off the floor it was black it had a cloak so my sort of way of explaining it it kind of looked like a grim reaper um so it flew straight into me corner of my bedroom i looked at it it looked at me i felt what it felt it felt what I felt type thing, like it was weird. And I felt that it was stunned. It was, it didn't know where I just landed. And I'm looking at it going, what are you? And where did you come from? And we both just looked at each other and felt it. And then it done a complete 360 on the spot and went and straight back out where it come from. And after it left, the temperature in the room returned to normal. And I was like, oh my god what was that thing and i laid back down and i put the blanket over my daughter's head over my head tucked the doona up under my feet because so, i thought oh if this thing comes back i don't want it getting in the bed with me <laughs> and 
and it didn't come back. Not that it would stop it, but that's just the type of, you know, when you're afraid, you're like, oh, my God. And I turned me back to the to the door and I thought, God, I don't want to see this thing if it comes back and it's not getting in over my head and it's not getting in from under my feet. Oh, that would have been terrifying. Yeah, I cannot believe it. I couldn't have even dreamt that thing up. Oh, it, it's it's... it's... I don't know, like, what do you do? Like, you, yeah, like you're saying, like, you just you can't do anything but just like go in a fetal position and just try and hide, like, because you can't do anything, but you don't understand what it is. It's just, yeah. oh, it's I, giving me a bit of goosebumps just thinking about what I'd do. It was. It scared the living hell out of me, and it had no limbs. Uh, didn't see like no arms out of the cloak. Didn't see no legs, even though it was a meter off and flying. Um, it had no. I couldn't see no facial features. Not even like red eyes you know some people say oh they're like black shadow people or whatever and they're bad news if they've got red eyes or something they reckon like because i was trying to do research on what this thing was after it but it didn't even have like no facial features no limbs no eyes couldn't see nothing just uh, the black outline like a black cloak sort of you know the arms like you could see like sort of like a shawl thing and then yeah the bottom of it and then the, the, the slits in the, in the bottom yeah so of it. it had like a, a hood there but it's just like where the face should be it was just all black and dark and yeah yep mm-hmm. yeah wow that that is scary like i've I don't really hear any yeah. of that at all like like when you come in through your research like did you get much on it on that at all when like trying to determine what not, it could have been not really no nah, i mean I don't know. I mean, I I like got a perforated intestines, very sick with Crohn's disease a year or two later and um should have died, but you know, got a lot of willpower and um recovered from two blood transfusions and getting all my intestines chopped out and a stoma bag on my belly, but I don't know whether it came in at the wrong time. Um, you know, maybe it was coming to get me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I, actually that reminds me. So after I did see that I some one of my family members gave me a feng shui book for Christmas so I'm reading it and then I come across all these different things and one of them said um whatever you do do not put your um your bed head facing south which is what it was because it opens up portals to um bad spirits to come in into into this realm into this world and um it can also make you have a bad life and bad things happen to you and yeah just not a happy person so i'm like oh god maybe that's why it came in i was sort of like opening a portal by having me me bed facing south so yeah i i moved it the ne- next day and moved it to the um to the west and yeah never saw it again no no other but I do remember I went out one night. Um, I don't know whether this was before or after the ghost, th- the Grim Reaper thing, but my daughter, um, my sister looked after me daughter while I had a night out. Um, and I think Talisha was probably about five then. So I think it was probably before the ghosty thing. Um, my sister Jess reckons that she was laying in my bed. Talisha was in the bed. This is when the bed was facing west, uh, east. Sorry. And she woke up and it was about uh, midnight. She woke up and she's seen on, because Jess is on this side of the bed, Talisha's on that side of the bed. She reckons she woke up and she's seen a, um, a ghost lady with sh- short grey hair and black eyes standing over the bed, standing over Talisha, my daughter, um, and just woke up and, like, was scared and said what 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 are you doing who are you and she goes it's okay and she had her hands behind her back and she's bending over and she says it's okay i'm just checking um to see if talisha's all right like i'm just checking over talisha wow okay yeah. so um maybe a possible uh, great grandmother or something uh don't know i don't know if my grandma was still alive then or not um my grandma died in 2005 i think yeah, I don't know. Don't know. Could have even been my mum because my mum died when I was 16. Okay. So, but my, my mum had like um, black c- curly shoulder length hair. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It was weird. Yeah, look, so, when yeah. it comes to the paranormal sort of things, like, I, I find it more scary than the, uh, the UFO kind of topic <laughs> because <laughs> there's a lot more random unknown things with the, uh, the 
the the paranormal side of things because like you know it, it, it's got such a broad range of what it could possibly be like ghosts or you know like some sort of cryptic kind of thing demonic or yeah. <laughs> good or evil you know it's sort of it's that's more yeah. scary to me yeah it does scare me too um my brother you can't talk to him about any stuff like that but he, he told me uh two weeks ago when we got back from camp and um we're driving home and he told me that he's seen two ghosts and he thought it might have been mum okay. yeah and i never knew. he's only three years younger than me so yeah um and i never knew yeah never knew. so um, just he... a question so in regards to like the but whole he gets freaked out and so does me younger sister jess my older sister d she they sort of don't really believe in jesus where oh, i do think that jesus does exist i think he did I do think there's something to it, um, but you know, most of my other siblings probably don't. Um, but that's okay. Yeah, um, I look each their own when it comes to religion. I've got my own views on religions too. I I hate them personally because it just the my, the way it controls the world. Yeah, my dad does too. Actually, he said, you know, you know, the, one of the most evil things in the world is religion, yeah. and I agree. Was you know, look at it all the. Um, the Catholic priests and, you know, and the Vatican and all the secrets in there. Oh, I'd love to break into the Vatican. Yeah. Imagine what you find in there. I oh, know. There's oh, just so much yeah. history that they're just hidden behind those doors and just kept away from the world. Like They know more about the world than what anyone does, I reckon. I, yeah, definitely. Um, I do think, you know, um, the Vatican and all that type of thing, I reckon... You know, some of the priests that they've hired and that, they do horrible things to children in schools and that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Religion is a very powerful and evil thing. Yeah, that's where I'm more, more against the, the religion side of things because it's so controlling on our everyday lives because, like, they control... Well, even back in the old days, like, you know, everyone was so focused on religion. God is the way. Anything against that, it's yeah. just, like, you're either a witch or you're evil or yeah. you know, even, even to question the church, like, you are pretty much yeah put to the chopping board um yeah obviously like it's not um just religion itself you know there's still a lot of evil in the world themselves from people everywhere you know when it comes to like you know what they do with children and in that sort of spectrum um but you know it's either way i feel like you know religion was majorly controlling in uh on focusing on stopping people from getting uh in touch with their spiritual side stopping a lot of shamanism, you know, sort of um, yep. anything in that sort of aspect where we can connect with the the outer yep. environments of the spiritual world, you know, or other dimensions in that case. So, yeah, yep. uh, that's where I, my hatred for religion is just because of the base on that control. Even governments today without trying to go political on it, but, you know, there's too much control in the world and we're just so based on everything being what we see is the reality. We can't question anything else like that. Otherwise, you're going to be classed as a crazy person. Yeah, I mean, I believe in Jesus, but my my stuff is light. You know, what I mean, I don't carry heavy loads. I don't go to. I don't feel like I have to go to church. I don't. I'm not bogged down in it like a Jehovah's Witness that comes and forces you forces themselves upon other people, knocking at their doors on a Sunday or a Saturday. That's wrong. Um. You know, but, you know, I'm more spiritual and believe, you know, things are possible, you know, just yeah. not close my Yeah, look, so. I've also been open up to the, the possibility, like, you know, God is whatever you want to call it. It doesn't mean it has to be, like, from a a Christian side or anything like that. It's just whatever you want to call God in your own universe. And Yeah, all, all religions have their God. Yeah, but even in, in, in the religions, they're all based off the same sort of story, you know, like, you know, um, At one person that's divine and magical and had yeah. powers. And they always had this prophet come down, like, you know, Jesus, or I think it was like um, Muhammad was the prophet, I think. I can't remember. They even got um, uh, Buddhas, or well, I can't think it would come from the Buddha side of things now, but you know, they always had like the main God guy, and then they always had some guy come from the heavens and, you know, spread yeah. the word of the God. You know, it always yeah. seems to be the same sort of story of the same one guy, another guy come in to spread it, and then, yeah. To me, it's just all the same story and just warped to religion's agendas. To their, to their side of the story, their beliefs, yep. yeah. Yeah, I've never read the Bible, but um, I, I do believe I do believe that Jesus did exist. I mean, yeah, well. Yeah, without doubt. 
but he's not white. <laughs> uh, yeah. Someone who's born in the Middle East and yet he's white. <laughs> yeah. Well, With mates named Michael, John, and Luke and stuff like you know. <laughs> Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That's it. Yeah, yeah. They all come from the Middle East with those names. It's like, okay. <laughs> But um, look, um, it's it's a it's a crazy word out there. Like whether we're, like what your beliefs are, religion or what, if it's just yeah. it's more of the side of things. Like you know, however you want to look at things, things are happening in this world we don't understand. It yeah. needs to be brought out, and like that's where I'm saying, like you know, thanks yeah. to you and others that are coming out speaking forward about these things, it's just it yeah. opens up the entire new world. This people are trying to understand, like you know, feel free to question yeah. everything. You don't have yeah. to go and sit there and accept everything in the world, you know, because there are so many questions and we're not going to get all the answers, but the more people question things and try and figure out the answers, we might eventually get that answer. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I think just, you know, be be kind. I think that humanity needs to be a bit, bit more kind. Um, you know, do, some, do one thing nice for somebody each day or something, you know. Like I think that we're just not really – as a civilization, we're not going to last much longer. Like we're going in a bad, bad way. There's too much crime, too many murders. It's just too many people addicted to drugs. It's just it's scary. Yeah, scary, isn't it? I don't want to see animals extinct. I don't want to see wars. I don't want to see our beautiful planet blown up to smithereens. You know, I care about people. I care about the planet. I care about uh, animals. I care, you know, there are other things out there. Yeah, value life. That's pretty much what should we just value everything that's living in life and beautiful. Yeah. Because the world is beautiful. It needs to be looked after. And that's where it comes down to like um, the ancient sort of civilizations, you know, they had an acceptance for the world around them. Um, they appreciated the nature, you know, they respected nature. Yeah. They lived in a harmony love- with nature and, you know, everything was back to the land you know yeah i love being out in nature and it's beautiful i love all that sort of stuff i feel like if i go to melbourne i'm like claustrophobic and i come home and i feel like i'm just full of pollution and blow me nose and it's all yeah i'm not much for city life either it's i grew up on the gold coast there and even though i was on the outskirts of the gold coast um it's still a city life and it's just a rat race everywhere people everywhere just focus on doing their jobs and stuff like that and you know you just you lose appreciation for what's the actual world's got for you yeah to be thankful for yeah Mm. i've never been a Never been to Queensland, but I hope to go one day. Yeah, look, 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 even all places like Queensland's got these beautiful locations and that, um, like just like everywhere in Australia does, even everywhere around the world. And yeah. whether we can go and travel those places in our lifetimes, that's, that's the next thing. So hopefully we can get these um, UFO technology yeah. there, so we can go and zip to these locations and go and spend a bit of time there. You know, <laughs> wouldn't that be awesome? Yeah, I don't know. Geez, I can't even go on a roller coaster, let alone a UFO. <laughs> God. Well, Quite the way hard. they. The way they have it, though, is they, there's no gravity inside them, so you can just sit, stand there and zip to these locations, so there's no effects whatsoever, apparently. Yeah, no, I'll be gone by then. <laughs> I think I'll... we will be, too. I'll, I can, like, a lot of this generation will be gone. Mm. I'm hoping to see something, at least. So, but, um, but just quickly before we do finish the show up, though, um, I was a question I was going to ask, yep. too. Like, with the um, the two UFOs you've seen, well, did you happen to take notice of any missing time or anything? Like, like, if there was, like, a time frame between that at all? Like, uh, no, no. No, no it's pretty normal. Feel, yeah, I, I don't feel like they took me up in there. I oh, know I'd remember it. Well, that's the thing. Not a lot of people do remember it, so it's yeah. one of those things. Yeah. Well, they can, yeah. Apparently they can manipulate sort of like you, so you don't remember like yeah. in other I've seen. But no, I never got that feeling. Never got the feeling like there's missing time or anything like that. Yeah. I, I do remember not seeing it you know it's sort of going behind you know house roofs um this power surge and yeah walking back up the driveway going inside talking to Talish going wow was that crazy or what yeah no so what about like um in regards to your family wise are they having pretty experienced with the, the ufo side of things as well or is it mostly just the paranormal side of thing they might have been a bit tuned to um my dad's seen one, actually. Um, my mum told me before she died that 
um, when she was still with my dad, um, they were driving out on that um, that highway where I saw the UFO above. But there was a, there's another road next to it called Waterloo Road. Um, that used to be the old highway. Mum told me in the 80s, her and dad were driving in a car down there and they saw a UFO. Yeah, okay. Did they say um, more to, did it all? Like if there's much to it? Um, don't really. She didn't really give me much information. I mean, I was a kid when she told me. Um, but I'm pretty sure she told me it had like had lots of colours on it and yeah, it was flashing and it wasn't high like that high from the car. Yeah, okay. So, so yeah, give regards um, to the eighties, yeah, something with flashing lights like that, you're not gonna get Yeah. That. I know um my dad maybe last year, I haven't got to speak to him about it yet. Um, but my sister told me that my dad saw one um at his farm in Traff um last year and my dad wouldn't wouldn't make that up like it's pretty straight down the line <laughs> like yeah. yeah um so yeah i'll have to ask him about that i wish i should have because then i could have you know <laughs> yeah that's all right oh look if you yeah. can go and hit him up there and like even if he wants to come on and i'll add it to this part of the interview as well if he wants to go and put his little snippet on there um hit him yeah. up for us that'd be great yep yeah, no, yeah. that's be amazing um look before we finish up like, is there anything else you want to sort of add to the this whole topic or any thoughts or um, I've got another ghosty thing. It didn't oh, okay. happen to me. Okay, yeah, go for it. Um, when my mum was, you know, um, a little bit younger, like in her 30s, um, we used to go to um, our friend's house, um, Neville, and my little sister was about three at the time, Jessie, and um, Neville had a green, a, a bedroom that was painted green and um it was full of musical instruments and Jess was just always um attracted to this room she'd go and sit in there and just play with the musical instruments and she'd be talking to someone all the time in there but she was the only kid in there so we sort of like older kids and you know the adults and that started taking notice of it anyway um it had a chest of drawers with a um with a mirror on it and they took a photo of it and there was a little um little boy um a ghost in the photo of the dresser mirror and um i think he was like probably dressed in the 1930s type um clothes yep yeah wow um, that's scary but but no one no one can find the photo oh the photo it's gone photo, photo is missing yep damn i was gonna but ask yeah. for the photo yeah <laughs> Yeah, but um, she was always attracted to the, this certain room at Mum's friend's house, and um, yeah, took a photo of it. And the little boy, she used to sit in there talking to someone when I was wondering who it was. Wow. It was like a little, little ghost boy. That would have been creepy, Just... yeah, seeing that in the in the mirror. Yeah, yeah. That, that's creepy. That's just like one of those moments, like you're like, oh, okay, yep, there is something there, like because like you sort of tell totally oblivious till you see something that's like shouldn't be there. Then you're like that, oh, that creepy vibe to it, it's like, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but I don't think they got the vibe that this, you know, because, you know, a lot of people that tell, they, like, see these things, you know, they can say, you know, even if they're children, ghost children, you know, they sort of, you know, that they've got a sinister sort of, you know, they're trying, you know, they're, they're a little bit evil. But, yeah, they got the impression that this little boy wasn't, like, you know, trying to hurt anyone or cause a scene or, you know, nothing like that. Yes. Yeah. Do you happen to try and find the history of the house at all to see if, like, um, there had happened to be any deaths in the house or anything like that? No, I don't know. Not that I'm sure we can get that record in Australia. I'm not really sure. Yeah. Um, nah, didn't really find out anything. Um, I mean, because I was still a kid then. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. It's just, yeah, just stuck out. I just remembered that. Yeah, no, that's but, all right. um, when when my um pa died in hospital my mum said that um mum was out out of um pa's hospital room when he was like gonna die and down the corridor or somewhere else talking to doctors and um grandma and i don't know something something happened where like pa went out of his body and floated down the um corridor and heard the conversation what mum and grandma and the doctors were talking about yeah there's something weird about that yeah i've heard about I've the other out-of-body experiences yeah and i've 
I've also um, floated out of my body a couple of times, um, you know, like you're laying on the bed. I think they're called OBEs, aren't they? Out of body experiences. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, and like I've been asleep and I'm laying on the bed, but then I'm awake and I'm like watching me, like I can see myself and feel myself on the bed, but I'm floating up above the bed. Like oh, the that's roof. different. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah. I haven't, I haven't done I haven't done that for many years, but that was that house in tra- in Traff that, that it happened probably about mm, two, three times. Yeah, okay. I remember having yeah. something similar like that happened to myself um, when I was a kid. I don't know if it was a dream or what, uh, but I remember like I was, I knew that I was in bed asleep, but I was out of bed and I was like hiding from my dad because he came in to check on me when I was in, in the bedroom, thinking I was going to get in trouble yeah. for still being awake, you know, but I was hiding. Yeah. And but yeah. yet I had these other people around me in, in my room as well, which yeah, obviously no one's around in the room because I'm it's my own room. Yeah. And that's all I can remember. Like my dad just coming in, open the door, checking to see if I'm asleep, and then that was it. But yes, yeah, this is the weird fact that I just I knew that my body was still in bed. Kind of like, that's the weird thing. That's probably about the only memory I have. Sort of like a, might potentially be an out of body experience. I'm not sure, but yep. the other thing is too, like, you know, I had these other people around me, which I had no idea who were they were mm. in any relation. So it's just like, we were like, oh, shh, you know, he's here. You can hear us. Shh, shh. We're all giggly and whatnot. And that's, yeah, that's my, that's my closest experience, maybe. Yeah, wow. So, yeah. It's weird what we can do, eh? With, um, I don't know, anything that's supernatural, we can do some weird things. We've, um, we're attuned to it. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm definitely going to keep looking up in the skies, looking up to the skies at night time, have a cuppa outside. Yeah, I'm going to keep looking. And, um, yeah, if I know, if I see, like, you know, a light up in the sky that's moving and it's just too small, I don't even bother trying to use my phone. I mean, if I seen that great big yellow thing and it wasn't far from me, then it, then I'd get my phone out and record it. But a lot of it I just, you know, just watch it with my own own eyes and just experience it not sort of worry about filming it but if i know that it's something that it's not going to look ridiculous and a tiny dot on the camera yeah i'll, I'll try and film that for sure yeah bloody oath because what that, that yellow object had what about 2008 2009 did you say um yeah yep yeah, I, think, yeah. I think yeah well, even yeah. then phones or anything like that were crap during nighttime photography, so you would have got nothing. <laughs> yeah. So unfortunately, but but look, um, if you got nothing more to add to to this, um, that's it. That's it. Look, um, yeah. look, thank you very much for coming on the show. It's been absolutely wonderful having on you and talking about your experiences there and just having a general chat about it. It's absolutely fantastic and wonderful. And um, oh, yeah, can't thank you enough for joining me. That's all right. Thank you so much for listening to me. Yeah, no worries. Well, look, um, hopefully talk to you again in the future there, and hopefully um get something from your old man. And um, yep. have a get his two volleyball in there. But yeah, again, yeah, thank you very much for coming on. No worries. Right. Thanks a lot. Talk to you soon. Cheers. Yeah. Bye. And that will do it, folks, for this episode of Encounters Down Under. I hope you enjoyed the show. And remember, you can also get involved in the show by joining the Facebook page and getting in on the live streams. Also, please be sure to share with your friends and family to help us grow and potentially find our next guest on the show. If you or you know someone who has had an encounter, please get in touch with me through our Facebook page via Messenger or email at australianufosightings at outlook.com.au. I look forward to seeing you on the next encounter down under. Hooroo!